Here we have a delicious, rustic, homemade chicken pot pie. If you've never done this at home, you owe yourself the favor to try it. And we're going to show you how to do it today on Too Hot to Handle. All right, so here is our mise en place for everything we need for that delicious, yummy looking chicken pot pie. Now mise en place simply means that you have everything you need all together. It's pre-cut, pre-measured, and this is the way professionals work in their kitchens and it's really the way you should work at home when you want to cook because you don't want to stop what you're doing and to cut something and stop and cut something else. Have it all together so you can just throw it right in. We've got two chicken breasts and uh, if you don't know how to do that, uh, to get it off the chicken, I've already made an episode on how to uh, cut a part of chicken. Reference that, and you can see those three very thick slices of bacon, uh, a little, about a cup of potato, that's some shallots, some carrots, some celery, uh, about eight ounces of homemade chicken stock, and some heavy cream. Now that's pretty much all we need to get ourselves going. So let's just launch right into it. Uh, the last thing we need to do before we start here is to cut up the bacon and I'll just stack it as you see here, overlap it and start slicing through. We just want it into smaller chunks and we're going to uh, cut up the chicken to go with that as well. This doesn't have to be pretty, we're just chunking it up because it's mostly going to be reduced in the pan anyway and this is going to add a nice delicious smoky flavor to that pie very good don't have to be neat or pretty about it at all now for the chicken I, it has a little bit of parts of fat so I'm going to trim off some of that that we don't need we don't need excess fat in what we're doing here it comes off fairly easy and we're just going to make this into strips and then bite-sized chunks so, here we go, just like that. And I'd say maybe they're oh, a half inch to three quarters of an inch wide. And then take each one of the strips and give it a nice little chunk. I hope my hands aren't too much in the way to see what I'm doing here. Each piece would be about enough to fill a spoon or sit nicely on the end of a fork. There's one and then the other. I'm sure you don't need to see me do that again so I'll meet you back here when we're done. And now we have everything all together the first place uh, I mean sorry the, the first thing we're going to do is start with a mirepoix. And the mirepoix is just this collection of aromatic vegetables. It's usually, classically, carrots, onions, and celery. Uh, I don't have onions in here. These are shallots. They're part of the onion family, but they have a little more pronounced flavor. Now, this pan is set to high heat because we're going to saute, which means to cook very quickly, adding just a little bit of vegetable oil, not a whole lot. We don't need very much, and we're going to start off generally with the hardest vegetable first, and that's the carrots. So we'll get them a little head start, let them go in there, and start sizzling. And that's on pretty high heat, as I said, so we're going to give it a stir, and the idea of sauté is to keep it moving. If I was using a lighter pan, I'd probably be flipping it with my wrist there to get it around, but if this is cast iron and it's pretty heavy and my wrists aren't what they used to be, so we can keep it moving with a little wooden spoon. And as that starts there, we can start adding a little bit of seasoning, a bit of kosher salt, a few grounds of peppercorns,
Now we're not going to need to cook these all the way through. We're just going to give it, uh, kind of sweat them a bit to start releasing their flavors because they're going into the pie and they will cook in the oven later. All right, so now that the carrots have a little head start, we'll pop in our celery. And I don't have exact measurements on these. I mean, I filled up this little glass bowl and you can see it's about the size of my hand. What is that? Maybe a cup, three quarters of a cup. But the proportions don't really matter here. What matters is that you have a nice blend of flavors. We'll get those going and add the shallots. Now that is what I call aromatic. That's going to lend such a lovely flavor to our pie. And I'll keep those going for a few minutes and meet you back here in a moment. I got this slotted spoon there. It'll let some of the oil stay in the pan because we're going to need that oil for the next, which is the chicken. So just take your mirepoix and put it off to the side. And we'll come back and revisit that in a moment. Pan is still nice and hot. Starting to get a little coloration on the bottom of the pan, and that is quite all right. That is nothing but flavor, mostly uh, by the, caused by the shallots there, but that will all be reabsorbed and reused. Oops, a little messy. Yeah, very good. Okay, so don't have it. Have to have it totally cleaned out. Now we're putting that off to the side and now we're going to go for the chicken. And the important thing about the chicken, first of all, is to not crowd the pan. So we're just going to put a few chunks in at a time. We'll do this in a couple of batches. And the way I know how they're getting done is to put them kind of in a clockwise direction around the edge of the pan first. And then an inner ring. And that's about enough for our first batch. And I will wash my hands. And we gotta keep these kind of moving as well so they don't uh, adhere to the pan. already starting to do so I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit we don't need it as high as we do for the vegetables So we'll do this, keep them going a turn or two until they get nice and colored, nicely brown. And then we'll follow up with the next batch. And I'll meet you then. Alright, so we've basically kept that bacon moving. It's crisping up, rendering out its uh, smoky flavor. Well, I wish you could smell this. That, that is going to be such a wonderful addition that pie and so once again like all the other ingredients I'm gonna get that to the side and get it out of the pan and next we'll make our sauce for the pie just using a slotted spoon to allow some of the oil to stay in the pan and then next comes the roux and to do that I'm just gonna add a spot of butter Take that off the heat for just a second while it melts up. Now all this brown stuff in the bottom of the pan is just those food juices that have kind of uh, coalesced and coagulated there. Now what we have here is about a 
what I'd call a heaping tablespoon of flour. Just get that right in the pan. Stir it about for a moment. And a spoon on the floor. Okay, one dead soldier. We'll <laughs> get that later, but basically you want to uh, get all this flour incorporated into the bit of oil that's in the bottom of the pan for a moment or two. And uh, cooking the flour first is what helps it not to lump up. And now that that's done, I've got about oh, eight ounces or so of homemade chicken stock that will go right into that pan. And it will kind of help to glaze. And as it's going, you want to take this opportunity before it thickens up too much to scrape the bottom of that pan and get as many of those pan drippings released back into this liquid because this is a treasure trove of flavor and you see it's thickening up pretty quickly so I'm going to turn the heat way down now to barely on, barely a simmer most of that is then and then, in fact, I might even take it off the heat for just a moment. Make sure the camera is following so you can still see. Take that off the heat. Most of that pan drippings is coming up there. A little bit's left on, but we're probably not going to get it all. And then pour in our cream. Now, <laughs> that is luxurious. Let me just quickly get a wire whip here to incorporate the rest of that. back onto the heat then and oh my goodness it's on low heat now so it'll just simmer through and let me get a new spoon here so I can quickly taste for seasoning As that cooks, it'll thicken up a little bit. Give a quick taste. It's really good. Need some more salt and pepper, though. Grind of pepper in there. And a kosher salt. That, I believe, is going to be just delightful. Okay, so that starts to thicken back up. And now we will add back into this sauce everything that we've already cooked. The bacon, the chicken, and the mirepoix of carrots, celery, and shallots. Give that a little stir around. Let them all get to know each other. a few minutes. And finally, uh, the last ingredient is about a cup of potatoes that we've cut up. Now those don't need to be pre-browned or anything as they will cook in the oven. And speaking of the oven, right now as we speak I have it preheating to 400 degrees. And once this pie goes into the oven it'll be in there for about a half an hour. And it'll come out. It's a beautiful rustic pie. So, really, it's about a half hour prep and a half hour in the oven. So, in one hour, it's right to your table. So, that's a low heat now. We're just going to let that slowly simmer while we go and deal with the pie crust. All right, now we're all ready to do our puff pastry. It's a delicious pie crust, and I've got a marble slab here that I used to roll out the dough. And what we do first is just get a little bit of flour on the surface there. Now, here's your choice. You can spend all day, and I mean literally all day long, making a homemade puff pastry. Or you can do this. 
you can buy puff pastry sheets. And really, unless you actually literally want to spend all day making puff pastry, this is the way to do it. So, it comes right out of the box. It comes frozen in two sheets. I put them together, double them over, put them on there, and we are going to just hit them with the rolling pin, roll them out to the size we need. Work it this way and that way, that way and this way. These are still a little bit hard, so you don't have to baby it. You can actually pound it. help beat it into submission. This probably could have uh, warmed up just a little bit more before I started, but actually you don't want it too warm because what makes puff pastry puff is the fact that it has layers and layers and layers built into it, and those layers are layers of flour and layers of butter. And uh, the fact that those layers remain separate is what makes it puff up in the oven once it starts heating. Now, if you let your puff pastry get warm, too warm, before you start rolling it out and making your dough, then what will happen is that butter will melt and it's no longer in layers, it just becomes incorporated with the rest of it and becomes a sticky goo. And, I mean, it will still be a form of dough and you can still bake it, but It'll just lie flat. It won't puff up. It won't get to the that lovely point that we're looking for. So what we're doing here is just getting it to the size that we need. So the dish I'm going to use is this. It's like an oval. So we'll just keep watching it and make sure it's just slightly bigger than the dish that we're going to use. That's about as long as it needs to be, maybe just a touch wider. And then we'll fill up that pie. That's about good. Now, I'll move this over to the side here. What we're going to do is just take that delicious chickeny filling and put it right into our dish. Oh man, does that ever smell good. Oh, that chicken, creamy, creamy filling. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, once that's in there, we're just gonna kind of uh, make sure things are evenly distributed. Just like so. And then you take that and switch places here. Take that pie dough, stretch it out by hand if you need to. And just put it right on top. Now, we're not going to do anything fancy. Like I said, it's a, a rustic pie, so just crimp it on down as you will. Make sure it comes on into the inside of there. Very, very good. And the last thing we do is just put a little glaze on top of it to make it shine. And that's with an egg wash. It is simply one egg and one teaspoon of water. And we'll quickly beat that up. That's all it takes. Then we have our little kitchen paintbrush that we'll use to slather all over the top of that crust. And this will give it a lovely, lovely glaze and help it brown. And that's it. And a little around the edges kind of help seal it in there too. all covered there. Very good. And finally, the last phase before it goes into the oven is just to poke it a little hole. We have to put a hole in there because it's, gonna, it's got to vent. Um, 
if we didn't allow a hole for it to vent there, then it would erupt and you'd have pie filling all over your oven. So I put about three holes right in the top, no big deal, just to let all that stuff. Now, the oven is preheated to 400 degrees, so we're going to pop that in there and check it in about 25 minutes, but I think about half an hour is good for it to be done. All right, now half an hour later, that's out of the oven, and it looks just delicious. The crust is puffed up. We did have a little bit of it uh, bubble up over here. The vents may not have been tight enough, and sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, either way, it's not going to affect the taste. It's just gorgeous. Man, I almost hesitate to have to dig into this, but let's, anyway, just break that crust. Oh, wow. That is looking delightful. Dig into there. Oh. Wow. Make sure we get lots of that meat and carrots and potatoes. And man, oh man, oh man, I'm telling you. That is a fine, fine looking dinner. Did I just block that whole thing? <laughs> yes, I did, but oh my goodness. So yeah, delightful. That sauce is thickened up and oh, that crust is just so buttery and flaky and tender. Gotta have a bite here, gotta have a bite. Oh, look at that. One moment. Mm. Oh my goodness, that is fit for the king. Now you notice we did not put any kind of fancy spices in there or anything else. Nothing more than salt and pepper and everything else is just the natural flavors of the ingredients themselves. The chicken, the shallots, carrots, celery, potatoes, chicken stock and cream and oh my goodness. Oh. I could have another bite of this. This is so good. You must try it. You've seen how incredibly easy it is, and you just won't believe how delicious it is. My house right now smells like heaven. Wow. So, try it. You'll like it. So there you have it. Nothing could be simpler. A delicious, homemade, rustic chicken pot pie, the likes of which you've never tasted before. You gotta make it, you gotta taste it, you gotta give it to your family and friends. They'll love you for it. Now, if you like what you've seen, do me a favor and click like on the link, or leave a comment and share it with your friends. And most importantly, come back again and see what's cooking. Mm -hmm.